Hi, this is a 60-year-old lady who has undergone a cataract surgery about 10 days back and her main complaint is poor vision after surgery. On examination, uh, we can see that the eye is aphakic. It looks like she has undergone a manual spontaneous cataract surgery with a cleidocorneal incision. On examination, uh, we can see that there is vitreous in the antechamber which is mixed with pigments and blood and it is running all the way towards the wound. On dilated examination I saw and uh, there was some evidence of posterior capsule but it was not clear enough whether it would be sufficient enough for me to place the posterior chamber lens. Because the visibility is quite muddled, the B scan was done and shows that uh, the retina is attached and vitreous is clear. So I'm not sure about the possibility of placing posterior chamber lens in this case so I have mentally prepared myself uh, to implant an iris claw lens. And if possible, a posterior chamber lens, if the support is adequate. So the plan is to do an anterior vitrectomy and then assess the situation of the capsular support system and then decide on the choice of uh, an intraocular lens, whether to go in with a posterior chamber lens in the sulcus or an iris clip lens. The surgery is being performed under posterior subtenance anesthesia. So this is the view with the retroillumination mode on the microscope and let me pause here and show you what I'm seeing. Now this is the edge of the posterior capsule and this is where the posterior capsule tear is. So we have the posterior capsule beyond this area. There's no capsule support in this area and I'm not sure where the anterior capsule or the other edge of the posterior capsule is but this rim in the superior quadrant looks to be that of the anterior capsule I'm still not sure and underneath it there seems to be lens matter which is sequestered inside. At this stage my plan would be to perform an anterior vitrectomy but taking care that I don't damage this capsule remnants because if there is adequate support I may still consider placing a posterior chamber lens with the support of the remaining anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. Before I begin I'm going to mark these two ends these are the ends where I'm going to create side ports because this is what I'm going to use if I'm going to enclave the iris clip lenses. So this gives me a proper guide to place the hooks of the iris claw lens. So I'm just retracting the conjunctival flap and just trying to examine the wound area. And we can see there is this scleral tunnel incision which has been sutured with three sutures. So now I'm going to perform the side port at the marks which I've created. The side port on my right coincides with the original side port. Maybe it has opened up. The side ports are fashioned in a such a way that they're more of a stab incisions which are of great help when you're trying to tuck the iris clip lens. The first thing to do is to inject diluted triamsunacetate to delineate the vitreous Irrigation is introduced through my non-dominant hand using the other side port and care is taken to ensure that the bottle height is extremely low. It's set at 30 centimeters. Now with my right hand I'm entering the antechamber with the cutter itself. In a few moments the prolapsed vitreous in the antechamber is taken care of by the vitrector. With the clearing of the vitreous and some of the blood which was there, the visibility is now very clear and the posterior capsular tear and the remnant is very well delineated now. We can also see areas of remaining lens matter which needs to be dealt with. The vitrectomy is continued by swapping the hands and once I am sure that the entire vitreous which is prolapsed in the antechamber and which is around the vicinity of the posterior capsular tear is taken care of, now is the time to deal with the cortex. So I've gone in with my bimanual irrigation aspiration. Mind you, this is only after a certain that there's no vitreous around. I've retracted the iris with the irrigation cannula so that I can visualize the quadrants in which the cortex is there and then I can go and aspirate these cortex. This lens matter is actually sequestered in between the posterior capsule and the anterior capsule leaflets. So gently but surely most of the lens matter is aspirated out. Now because the side port on my right hand had coincides with the original side port incision, the wound has opened up and the iris is trying to prolapse out. 
nevertheless very carefully and very patiently most of the cortex which is sequestered in the capsular fornis is being aspirated out so as i am aspirating this cortex i can now clearly visualize and see that this is the edge of the endocapsule so the posterior capsular tear in the superior quadrant is way down in the periphery to whatever rim which i am seeing is actually the endocapsule the hands are switched and the cortex in the other quadrant that is in the superior quadrant is again being aspirated in a similar way there are few fibers of the vitreous which are over the anterior surface of the iris and they are looking very sticky so i'm just changing my mode into an ia cut mode and the fibers are pushed up using the irrigating hand piece each of these fibers is engaged by the vitrector and then cut and aspirated during this maneuver some of the torn fragile posterior capsule comes into the port of the vitrector and it just gets chewed off but nevertheless the the stronger support of the remaining posterior capsule in the inferior hemisphere is still intact and i'm hopeful that i can manage to place pc lens let's see how things turn out now before venturing into putting the lens i just want to reconfirm the absence of any vitreous in the wound and i'm surprised to see this blob of vitreous fiber which is running around through the wound and although the vitreous in the antechamber is cleared off there is still enough vitreous in the wound itself and now i'm with the cutter itself i'm going to deal with this uh, vitreous in the wound and now some of these fibers which are there on the anti surface of the iris it's important for me to change the vitrector to the ia cut mode and the cutting is also changed to the linear mode so that i really have an excellent control in what i'm holding and what i'm cutting here So these fibers are already cut and they don't have any connection with the posterior part of the vitreous space but each of these vitreous fibers have to be removed so I'm using linear cut mode and this is very helpful we can cut this individual vitreous fibers without causing any collateral damage to the underlying iris uh, just continuing the anterior vitrectomy I'm just using irrigation and the cutting to the main wound itself the pupil has come down in size with the irrigation in my hand piece i am using the y hook to retract the superior iris to just see and try to understand the presence of the anticapsule there is an underlying thick lens material inside which needs to be taken care of before placing the intraocular lens but nevertheless this was quite heartening and it i thought it's worthwhile considering a post chamber lens in the sulcus with the iris being retracted by the irrigation hand piece i'm going in with my bimanual aspiration cannula to aspirate out the cortex which is remaining in this quadrant it's a little bit cheesy and it takes some time to pull it out and then aspirate i'm retracting the iris with my irrigation probe just to visualize any remaining cortex there seems to be none but the encouraging part is that i've got enough capsular support this is the rim of the endocapsule which is visible in the superior quadrant so i'm going to try and place an posterior chamber pmma lens in the sulcus itself with the support of the endocapsule and the posterior capsule here ovary is injected over the anterior capsule and then a single piece pmma lens is being slid into the ciliary sulcus over the capsule the lens is then gently manipulated and dialed so that both the haptics are over the capsular support the superior haptic would be over the anterior capsule and the inferior haptic would be in the ciliary sulcus and above the posterior capsule remnant I'm just inspecting any remnant of vitreous fiber under the wound and I just find a couple of threads of vitreous stained triamcinone acetate which I'm taking care with the help of a tractor. Just want to be absolutely sure that there is no uh, remaining vitreous in the uh, wound. I'm performing a peripheral iridectomy using the vitrector itself in the superior quadrant uh, with the irrigation being on uh, with my second irrigating hand piece. I'm going to use the IA cut mode with very low cutting rate so that just I can aspirate the iris and then cut. 
Well, the arytomy is basically to safeguard uh, from any secondary glaucoma if the patient develops any inflammation and pupillary block. Time to close. I'm going to put in an air bubble and I'm going to put a single stitch in the superior incision. This is primarily to minimize the amount of against the rule stigmatism which will be induced by this incision. I'm just putting some trams on acetate in the wound and then trying to visualize any presence of vitreous. Thankfully, there is none now. The air bubble is removed now and I'm just going to check once again the uh, centration and stability of the lens. I'm retracting the iris on the inferior side and visualizing that the this part of the lens has got adequate support and it's over the posterior capsule and quite stable and as is the superior quadrant. Again, the iris is retracted and I'm convinced that the lens has adequate support of the remaining anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. I'm just tapping on the lens just to confirm that the lens is quite stable and secure. Using a diluted pilocarpin just to bring down the pupil. Time to close the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is closed with two sutures on either end and I take care to ensure that the knots are buried inside. Intracranial antibiotic is placed inside the eye. That's it, the case is done. These are the pictures taken six hours after the surgery. The cornea is clear, the chamber is uh, very well formed and there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber and the lens looks to be quite stable. The patient had an unaided visual acuity of 624 and these are the pictures on the next post-op day. In the subsequent weeks, she is being monitored with a dilated fundus examination to look out for any peripheral retinal breaks and also the macula. She undergoes the OCT macula to rot any presence of cystoid macular edema. To summarize, this was a case which uh, threw up some surprises. I was not expecting any decent capsule support, but after vitrectomy and the visualization improved, I realized that uh, there was reasonable support uh, both with the remaining posterior capsule and the anterior capsule, which I could use to place the lens in the sulcus itself. The message here is that Doing antivitrectomy and having a functional antivitrectomy is a game changer for cataract surgeon. We cannot do cataract surgery without having a functional vitrectomy unit. Performing the antivitrectomy was very easy and if the primary surgeon was equipped with this instrument, I'm sure that the patient would have undergone and lens implantation in the primary setting itself. The second message is that you need to be very meticulous and patient in taking care of all the vitreous. In this case, we could see that the vitreous fibers were pasted onto the surface of the iris because it was a 10-day-old case and also the amount of vitreous which was there in the wound. So although the wound is sutured, you can still see that the vitreous can be stranded in the wound itself. So very patiently and diligently, you know, take time to identify every vitreous fiber which is prolapsed out and deal with it adequately. And you'll be surprised that most often than not, you got enough opportunity to place the lens either in the bag itself or in the sulcus. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.